Hi guys, we are continuing our read aloud of Peter Pan. Now, we um, were reading this text before everything had happened, so we are going to do a recap of everything that we have read so far. So stay tuned, stay with me. All right, we know our characters are Wendy, Darling, who lives with her two brothers, Michael and John, in the Darling home. The um, Darlings, uh, the mom reads, Mrs. Darling reads stories to the kids every night before they go to bed. And we learn that Peter comes, Peter Pan comes to the house in the evening and he likes to listen to the stories that Mrs. Darling is reading. And oh my gosh, I almost forgot about Nana. We know that Nana does not like when Peter comes because Nana, the dog, begins to bark and goes crazy. Now, with that being said, Nana is outside chained up because she was barking and the kids are asleep in their beds. Then Peter comes into the house and he's trying to get back his shadow and he tries to convince Wendy and the boys to come to Neverland with him. Now, they're all hesitant at first, but Peter convinces the kids to go because he tells Wendy that she will be able to see mermaids and the boys, Michael and John, that they will be able to learn how to fly. So they are now ready to go to Neverland and Tink is also in the picture. She's Peter's like sidekick, always helping out Peter. And the um, Peter takes Tink's fairy dust and sprinkles it on the kids so they can fly. Now we learn that Tinkerbell is not a fan of Wendy because she is jealous that Peter is now spending all this time with Wendy and she's not Tinkerbell is not happy about this. So they are off to Neverland and um, they have just arrived to Neverland. They are flying around. It was a really, really long journey and we have just learned that Tinkerbell is trying to sabotage Wendy because let's see where did we leave off I think we read chapter five before er, let me put this down thanks chapter five here we go oh okay seeing a chance to rid herself of Wendy Tink gestured, gestured for the girl to follow her what else could Wendy do all in the sky she flew trustingly after the fairy to meet her feet. So now we are reading chapter six, Island Come True. All right, follow along with me. As though it were a living, breathing thing, Neverland seemed to sense that Peter was almost home. Like a puppy, it strained and wiggled to meet him at the door. Whenever Peter went away, the island slowed. The fairies slept late, the wild animals nursed their babies, the pirates and the lost boys and the Indians stopped fighting wars and just called one another names instead. With his return, however, the whole place started to rumble as if a train were coming. The lost boys set out to find Peter, the pirates started looking for the lost boys, and the Indians began looking for the pirates and the wild animals started looking for the Indians. All of them went around and around the island but at the same speed so they never met. Let us take a moment to examine each group as it passes. The first to come on our way are the lost boys. The number of lost boys varies. If someone grows up which is against the rules he is kicked out. Right now, there are six. They wear bearskins and carry daggers, and they creep through the bushes like soldiers in single file. Leading the group is Tootles. Tootles has bad luck. The biggest adventure always seems to happen whenever he steps around the corner for a snack. When he returns, he inevitably finds the boys putting on bandages after a brilliant and bloody fight. He could be bitter about it, but 
Toodles is the sweetest and humblest lost boy. Next comes Nibs, the best dressed of the lost boys, followed by Slightly, who can carve whistles out of wood and dances to his own tunes. Slightly is also the most arrogant lost boy. He sticks up his nose at everyone so much that sometimes you can see right up inside. Curly is the fourth boy. He is always getting into trouble and he has grown accustomed to taking the blame even for things he didn't do. Last are the twins. We will not describe them because no one can ever tell them apart. Instead, let's move on to the pirates. So pause right here. I am going to ask you questions on um, the Lost Boys. So if you need to right now, pause the video, listen back, and like it's like you're rereading. Listen to what I was reading. All right, pause. Leading their ragged groups is the handsome Italian pirate, Ciso, who carved his name in blood on the back of the warden of the prison from which he had escaped. Behind him is the giant tattooed Bill Jukes, who once took six bullets before dropping the bag of gold pieces he'd been stealing. Next are Cookson and Gentleman Stark. Starkey is the most polite of the pirates. He always apologizes before stabbing anyone with a sword. Then comes the Irish pirate, Smee, and Noodler, followed by a few more ruffians. Somewhere in the middle of this dark and dangerous group is James Hook, the most feared pirate of them all. His hair is styled in long, shiny black curls, framing a sternly handsome face. His eyes are deep and black and dead, unless he is plunging his hook into someone, in which case his eyes sparkle a bright and happy red. Hook is a different breed of pirate from the rest of his crew. Except at the sight of his own blood, he is courageous. He is a master storyteller. He speaks beautifully and softly, even when he is swearing and is never more sinister than when he is being polite. After the pirates comes the Indians. So pause if you need to. Think about all the things we just learned about the pirates. I'm going to keep reading about the Indians. Creeping quietly like shadows, they carry tomahawks and knives. Among them is Tiger Lily, the beautiful Indian princess whom none dare approach for fear that she will raise her hatchet to them. Behind the Indians creep the beast, lions, tigers, bears, and other animals. The beasts are so hungry that their tongues are hanging out. Finally, there comes a giant crocodile. He is hungry too, but not for just any meat. No, he has a craving for something or rather someone very specific. The boys stop first. They are getting tired. I wish Peter would get home already and tell us how Cinderella ends, slightly said out of breath. Toodles was about to respond when the boys heard the pirates walking and singing in the distance. The lost boys had stopped, but the pirates were still coming. Peter had trained the boys well, and they knew exactly what to do. In a flash, they each ran to a nearby tree. Instead of climbing up, however, the boys went down. The trees were hollow, each with a hole in it, exactly as big as one of the boys, and all leading to the same underground cave. Hook had heard about these tree doors and thought it was silly that each boy had his own tree. For his purposes, however, it suited him just fine. Seven trees should be easier to find than one. The pirates soon arrived in the clearing where the lost boys had just been. While the others fanned out to continue their search, Hook and Smee stayed behind. I think I spied spotted that Nibs boy, Captain, Smee said. Shall I run after him? I could tickle him with my sword. 
No, Hook said. I went them all, especially their captain, Peter Pan. He cut off my arm and threw it to a passing crocodile. He waved his iron claw in the air. One of these days, I'm going to shake his hand with this. Is that why you fear crocodiles? Smee asked. Not all crocodiles, Hook replied. Just that one. It thought my arm was so tasty that it had followed me ever since, licking its lips, just waiting to eat the rest of me. The only reason it has not caught me yet is that it swallowed a clock which ticks inside it. I always hear the beast coming and run away. One day that clock's battery will die, Smee pointed out. The ticking will stop. I hook darkly. I, I sorry. I hook agreed darkly, sitting down on a mushroom. It was a strangely warm mushroom. Hook thought. Standing up, he pulled up the mushroom and discovered that its top easily came off. The headless mushroom then started to smoke. Why it wasn't a mushroom at all? It was a chimney. Down the chimney, Hook heard voices. It was the Lost Boys. He has found their cave. Looking around now, he could see holes in seven of the nearby trees. The entrances. I heard them say that Peter is away, Smee whispered. Hook smiled and nodded. He carefully replaced the mushroom top. He had a plan. Let's return to the ship, Hook said. We will bake a cake for them and leave it on the mariner's rock in the mermaid lagoon. The boys are sure to find it and gobble it up and it will make them sick so that we can more easily capture them. Oh, how Hook and Smee laughed as they walked back to the boat. Soon, however, another sound replaced their laughter. It was the sound of ticking. Hook stopped short, shuddering. Run, yelled Smee, but Hook was already gone. All right, if you need to, and need help answering these questions, you need to go back and listen. When you think you hear the answer, pause my reading, play it back, and then answer the questions. You guys got this.